Welcome to Book Root Readings, your channel for classic, nature, and living children's books. Click the subscribe button to be notified of new readings. Enjoy the story! Which Side Are You On? The Story of a Song by George Ella Lyon Artwork by Christopher Cardinal In Memory of Florence Reese, 1900 to 1986, in Hazel Dickens, 1935 to 2011. For the people of Harlan County, and for all who sing out for justice, especially Jean Ritchie, the Real World String Band, Jesse Lynn, Jason, Silas, Anne, and Kate, G-E-L. For the workers, organizers, their families, and friends who have taken a stand to protect our right to labor and live with dignity. For my son, Masio, who will inherit the fruits of this struggle, C.C. My Pa is a Miner Earns our dinner deep in the mountain, blasting and loading coal. Sometimes, when he's worked a low seam, my little sister has to walk on his back to straighten it out. We live in a coal company house, on coal company land, and Pa gets paid in scrip that's only good at the company store. He says the company owns us sure as sunrise. That's why we've got to have a union. Pa says if miners get together and say what they want and refuse to dig coal till they get it, that's called a strike, our lives will get better. They ain't better yet. We are all of us, me, Harvey, Hazel, Leonard, Elmer, James, and the baby, hiding under the bed. Ma watches from behind the door. Not hiding from a storm, or a bear that's got into this holler. Not from a thief. From bullets, they zing in through the walls through the windows. They ain't meant for us, they're meant for Pa. But if a bullet hits you, it don't matter whose name is on it, Pa ain't even here. Ma heard that Sheriff Blair was sending gun thugs after Pa. She got word to him not to come home, and he lit out over the mountain. We're in bad shape now, but if Pa got killed, we'd be sunk. So he's gone to save himself and the Union. That's what this is all about. Ma says we have to be brave. Pa is counting on it. She creeps into the kitchen. Keeping her head down, she reaches up and lifts the calendar off the wall. What are you doing? I'm aiming to write something. Tzing! A bullet just missed her wrist. Any of you young'uns got a pencil? We squirm around looking, but come up empty-handed. Ma finds a stub in her apron pocket. She uses the door like a table to write on. We can't move much under the bed, and it's hotter than a chicken coop. The baby starts to whimper too, but that don't stop Ma. We need a song, she says. Looks to me like we need a fort or a trip around the world. But that ain't happening. Ma just hums and scribbles on the back of May. When she stops for a minute, Elmer says, Sing it to us, Ma. Come, all you poor workers. 
Good news to you all tell of how the good old Union has come in here to dwell. Which side are you on? Which side are you on? I ain't on any side. I'm under the bed, and I want pa. Hush, your pa's working for the Union, and the Union's what can save us. Looks to me like it's about to get us killed. They're the company's bullets. Why don't the sheriff stop them? The company pays him not to. They own Sheriff Blair as sure as they own this house. They say in Harlan County, there is no neutral there. You'll either be a union man or a thug for J.H. Blair. Which side are you on? Which side are you on? If Pa gave up the union and did what the bosses say, would they quit shooting at us? <sighs> they would for now. And Pa could go back to work? Who wants to work for somebody that's been shooting at him? And if he did, he'd be a scab. Scab is a dirty word around here. It means you cross the picket line and dig coal when the miners are on strike. You help the bosses and hurt the workers. Pa would never do that. This ain't easy, but sometimes you've got to take a stand. I don't see us standing. I see us under the bed. Ma ignores this and goes back to writing. Don't scab for the bosses. Don't listen to their lies. Poor folks ain't got a chance unless we organize. Which side are you on? Which side are you on? This is how the night goes. Bullets through the walls. Talk under the bed. Words on the page. When the thugs finally quit shooting and we crawl out of hiding, we're sore and hungry and our house is busted up. But Ma has written us a song. When Pa comes back, he hugs us all. Then gets shaking mad. They could have killed every one of you. You too, but they didn't. And while they were trying, I wrote something. She sings her song, and Pa listens hard. Then he takes a deep breath. We could use that. It'll bring folks together. It did, and it still does. Which side are you on? Which side are you on? That song, written in 1931, in the mountains of Kentucky in a rain of bullets has been sung by people fighting for their rights all over the world. And Ma, Florence Reese, lived to tell the tale. Here she is on her 85th birthday. Author's Note We human beings have a big problem with greed. Wanting more than we need, more than our share. It's a lot easier to make money when you already have money, and all too often industry puts a higher value on profit than on workers' lives. This is what was happening in the coal mines of eastern Kentucky in the 1920s and 30s. Many mines were owned by big companies far away, who didn't care what happened to miners as long as the companies got their money. Mine operators their representatives, often kept wages low and spent as little money on safety as possible. In many cases, miners weren't paid in U.S. dollars but in scrip, a currency good only at the commissary or company store. This system meant that prices at the store could be kept high and all a miner's earnings eventually went back to the company. 
Whenever one side has all the power in a relationship, something needs to change. For coal miners, change came through a series of unions. The National Miners Union, the United Mine Workers of America, in which they banded together and went on strike, refused to work until they got a contract giving them better pay, safer working conditions, and health care. While on strike, workers form a picket line in front of the job site and carry signs to let people know why they're not working and to warn other workers not to come take their jobs. Changing the power structure is never easy, and that's where our story comes in. When organizers were trying to start unions in the coal fields, mine owners bribed county officials, including those enforcing the law, to try to stop them. They brought in outside workers, called scabs, to cross the picket line and keep the coal mines going. When strikers couldn't stop the flow of coal, they lost the workers' one power to withhold their labor and stop production. Violence broke out on both sides. Deputies and hired killers, gun thugs, attacked organizers and their families. Strikers fought back and sometimes attacked scabs. This violence gave Harlan County, Kentucky, where I'm from, its other name, Bloody Harlan. Sam Reese, Florence's husband, was a union organizer, and Sheriff Blair's deputies were after him. They attacked the Reese house more than once, and it was during the worst of these assaults that Florence wrote, Which side are you on? In the folk tradition, she used a tune she already knew and made up new words for it. Some say it was a hymn, Lay the Lily Low. Others say it was a ballad, Jack Monroe. A lot of great songs were born this way. You might try it yourself. We Don't Know Where, Which Side Are You On was first sung, but it's gone around the world in the 80 years since. If you go to YouTube, you could watch many versions today. As often happens with folk songs, singers have changed and added verses as needed, and one of the most famous verses, the one that ends, Poor Folks Ain't Got a Chance Unless We Organize, doesn't appear in Reese's published version. I include it here because it's a rallying cry, and everyone who knows the song would miss it. That's one of the great qualities of folk songs. They may have one originator, like Reese, for which side, but they have many makers. Folk songs are alive. Singers add their strengths and causes and make their own versions. Stories are like this too. You can find many accounts of how Florence Reese wrote the song and they won't all agree. You'd probably discover the same thing if you asked everybody in your family to give their account of one event. We remember things differently and what we remember changes. My version of the story comes from Bev Futrell, a member of the Real World String Band who heard it from Reese herself at the Highlander Education Center on the occasion of Reese's 85th birthday celebration. For many years, Florence and Sam Reese were affiliated with that famous social justice training center in Tennessee, where people such as Martin Luther King Jr., Rosa Parks, and Pete Seeger came together to plan ways to make our society more just. Like anything we humans make, unions are not perfect. Greed for money and power takes hold in unions, too. But there is no denying the positive role of unions in improving working conditions and establishing workers' rights. All these issues are very much alive today, when wealth and power are held by a small percentage of people so that the gap between rich and poor continues to widen. Look around and see what you could find about social justice where you are. It's never too soon to become informed. Decide what you think and speak out. You have a choice. You have a voice. You are how change happens. Acknowledgements In addition to those noted in the bibliography, 
The author wishes to thank the following people whose help was vital to this book. Karen Reese Cox, Florence Reese's granddaughter, who read the text and shared her memories. Highlander Research and Educational Foundation, especially Susan Williams, Pam McMichaels, and Candy Carowin. Roberta Heron, Director of the Center for Appalachian Studies at East Tennessee State University. Richard Jackson, who liked it from the beginning. Gary Hamilton, who took the photograph of Florence Reese. Charlotte Nolan, actress, writer, teacher, and lifelong friend. Rose Kohalia, who facilitated our visit to the Clover Fork Coal Company. Larry LaFollette, Director of Archives, Southeast Community and Technical College, Cumberland, Kentucky. Ned Irwin, University Archivist, East Tennessee State University. The illustrator wishes to thank Lewis Holman, who put me in touch with Charlotte Nolan, his close family friend in Harlan, Kentucky. Charlotte Nolan, Rose Cohelia, and her daughter Catherine for welcoming me to Harlan and going out of their way to show me their hometown. Their help was an invaluable aid in the visual research for this book. Sharon, Masio, Anthony, Bob, PJ, Ricardo, and Colin, my family and friends who helped and supported me every step of the way. Eric, Melissa, and Lauren, for helping me achieve my goals on a weekly basis. James Couch, for being a good neighbor at the campsite in Kingdom Come State Park, Cumberland, Kentucky. Zephyrie, Scott, and Christian. The author and illustrator wished to thank the Appalachian Studies Center at Eastern Tennessee State University, Pat Gerard, student archivist, John Flinner, photo and music archivist, and Amy Collins, interim director. Kentucky Coal Mining Museum in Benham, Phyllis Sizemore, director, Mike Obradovich, tour guide and retired miner. Carl W. Buck Shoup, retired miner from Lynch, Kentucky. And Rodney S. Adams, retired miner from Benham, Kentucky. Marie Whitfield, who took us on a tour of the offices and company store of Clover Fork Coal Company, which closed in 1957. Brian W. Whitfield Jr. Public Library in Harlan, Kentucky. The Edsel T. Godby Appalachian Center at Southeast Kentucky Community and Technical College. Special thanks to Sharon Quick for her generous work masking and compositing the final artwork. Book Design by Anne M. Giangiulio